Welcome. Welcome to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. This video is a galactic astrology reading of the Pisces full moon lunar eclipse at 25 degrees and 40 minutes on September 17th, 2024. Welcome. This lunar eclipse is a forceful one. We're going to get a taste of the force, the power that is beyond us. And we'll talk more about that as we go through this video. What I do in these videos, I put an outer layer of galactic points, fixed stars, and celestial bodies to the traditional Western tropical astrology wheel. And that is to help us connect with a bigger perspective are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my galactic alignments reference guide. There's a link in the description below. Thank you for being here. I'm so grateful for all the beautiful comments I'm receiving on each video. And I have a little announcement for you. I am working on a 2025 galactic astrology uh, forecast, which will be hopefully available sometime in October. I hope it's going to be earlier than October than than later in October, but it's going to be a multidimensional energy forecast for the year of 2025 next year. So I just wanted to let you know it's coming. I'm working on it and stay tuned. <laughs> This lunar eclipse is in square with the Orion Ring Nebula M42 at 25 degrees of Gemini. This is a powerful reminder that our soul's journey is happening no matter what. And now it's a time to highlight these late degrees of Pisces in a very forceful, spiritually forceful lunar eclipse that will help us get reminded about our uh, divine heritage. The ruler of this lunar eclipse is Neptune, and Neptune, as we know, is at a culminating anorectic degree of 29 degrees of Pisces at this time. So, wow. So, yes, the highlight on the Pisces-Virgo axis here is immense, and there is some really strong messages coming through at this lunar eclipse. In this video, you will receive three energetic themes that I see are key to this lunar eclipse. And also at the end, you'll receive three questions should you want to integrate this lunar eclipse energy some more. Interestingly, the last lunar eclipse we had in Pisces was in September 2016. That's eight years ago. And now we have uh, another lunar eclipse in Pisces here in the late degrees of Pisces. And in fact, we will have lunar eclipses for the next three years, including this year. So in 2025 as well, and in 2026 as well. So we have a three-year span here where Pisces is highlighted three years in a row. And this signifies uh, really important years for us and our human evolution here on Earth. And then the next lunar eclipse after that will happen in 17 years after 2026, in 2043. So there's a 17-year gap between this stretch of lunar eclipses in Pisces now, the, these coming years, and then again in 2043. Very interesting. This lunar eclipse is speaking of that it's time now to get attuned to the subtle forces, the power of the universal energies that we are due to connect with, the uh, mysterious, the undercurrent of forces, universal forces that are taking place no matter what, no matter what, what we want, no matter what, how we plan it out, no matter what we are seeing is right for us, this type of force is uh, according to natural laws, universal laws, and it happens no matter what. At this lunar eclipse, there is a highlight on growth and releasing uh, forces that holds us back. The way we see that is through that square, that powerful square to the Orion uh, Ring Nebula M42. And I'll speak more about that in theme one coming up. This lunar eclipse may put ourselves under some 
pressure. And this may be also from a place that you cannot really identify because the sign of Pisces makes it very subtle. But this is a uh, subtle undercurrent force that is um, working its way through uh, our daily lives at the moment. And it will unearth some insights that we are now due to release or maybe shift at this time. This lunar eclipse is inviting us to slow down and truly listen to that subtle force of the earth and how we can attune to that more in our daily lives. It is answers that are coming to us that we may not have seen before, that are not as obvious at this time. And on the surface, it may seem like there is a chaos going on or some sort of stir up that is happening at this time. But it's also for a greater purpose to help us tune into what actually matters. And it's often in chaos. We are um, forced to sit down and reflect and be still uh, because there's not so much else what we can do. In those times where there is a lot of turmoil, we are also going back to basics. So we're invited to tune into that suppressed part of ourselves that we are calling the shadow. The shadow is often the place within us where we have um, stowed away experiences, feelings that were too much at the time. Now is the time to gently allow those feelings and experiences to come up to the surface again and see them in a new light. And that often takes courage. This process of karma release is due now because also Pluto has moved back to Capricorn and between now and November 19th, it is a prime time to come back and gently unearth uh, karma that we are now uh, releasing. And again, this is happening no matter what. No, So the choice is, do we want to resist it? Or do we want to follow and go with the flow and learn from whatever comes up? It's our choice to focus on the subtle signs, focus on the subtle cues that brings this uh, alignment, this attunement, this um, opportunity to uh, adjust and correct, if you will, that we are asked to to do into, especially at this lunar eclipse. We may see physical evidence of this release from our environment. This planet is also going through a transformation. We are in a cycle now of release and transmutation, and this is a natural process. So either we resist it or we uh, go with the flow and make it as easy on ourselves as possible. It's our own choice. But at this time, we're getting reminded of those soul memories, perhaps associated with the Orion constellation that we have experiences from in our cosmic lives. We are now releasing some of that resistance or suppression uh, even deeper at this time because we're clearing the deck. We're in the process of transmuting so that we can step into the future. There's also progress against these lessons that we are here to transmute even more because there is also a direction for the future in this lunar eclipse and how we can take aligned action to step into the next phase. Before we go into the lunar eclipse chart, I'd like to share what the energetic themes are for this lunar eclipse. The first theme is Orion soul memories resurface. And here we're going to talk about the aspects to the lunar eclipse, but also uh, particularly around Orion Nebula M42. The second theme is honest progress on karmic lessons. And here we have Mercury conjunct dwarf planet Orcus. 
And the third theme is aligned action for the future. And here we're going to talk about the role of the nodal axis and also the north node conjunct alpha reticulum. All right, let's take a look at the lunar eclipse chart next. So here we have the lunar eclipse chart, and you can see here the moon conjunct Neptune at the very late degrees of Pisces. These two, the moon and Neptune, are conjunct the Pegasus constellation. And I marked out the Pegasus sheet there at 29 degrees of Pisces. But the moon is actually closer to Pegasus Merkab. Uh, Pegasus constellation is associated with freedom, liberation, and infinity. Uh, Pegasus constellation is going to be highlighted a lot during the next couple of months and next year. Uh, the exact square to the Orion Ring Nebula M42 at 25 degrees of Gemini is the gro growth opportunity provided to us here at this lunar eclipse. And we'll talk more about that in theme one coming up. But before we go into the theme one, I'd like to highlight that the third deacon of Pisces is ruled by Pluto specifically. And Pluto now is very much highlighted by the return into Capricorn uh, between now and November 19th. And this is a uh, sextile formed here between Moon and Neptune and Pluto at this time. So it's Pluto is assisting the, the lunar eclipse with necessary messages from the Capricorn unearthing of uh, resistance, if you will, if we call it that. Pluto is going to enter Aquarius on November 19th this year, 2024, and stay in Aquarius for uh, many, many years until 2043 in March. What's interesting here is that after the trio of lunar eclipses that we will have this year, next year, 2025 and 2026, the next lunar eclipse in Pisces will happen also uh, on the year 2043. So this is a link between Pluto's permanent transformation, conjunct there, Lyra Alatfar, Alatfar, the fixed star associated with liberation, uh, the yearning for peace and having courage, that type of energy. And now in that beautiful sextile between the moon and Neptune, uh, Pluto is guiding this uh, lunar eclipse and the messages and what takes place at this lunar eclipse. So here we have the first theme that I called Orion Soul Memories Resurface. And in addition to the main aspect here to Orion Ring Nebula M42, I also have plotted out the other aspects to major constellations uh, that we can see here at the lunar eclipse. First, we have also a square to the galactic center at 27 degrees of Sagittarius. And this signifies the uh, focus on our galaxy here. The galactic center is our main uh, driver for universal wisdom. And the square here signifies the growth opportunity that there is more for us to dive into. And often when I see that square to galactic center at 27 degrees of Pisces or Virgo, it is um, a growth opportunity to go deeper with our connection to Earth, but also our connection to cosmos. So here we have that square, T-square, <laughs> rather, again. We also have two trines that are also supporting this huge focus on the late degrees of Pisces. And it's a trine to Canis Minor Procyon at 26 degrees of Cancer. Canis Minor Procyon uh, is associated with energy around spiritual technology. And we've talked about in many videos in the past about Procyon, but Procyon is, has a key role in influencing uh, new technology, spiritual technology coming in. And this also is part of how we utilize technology for the highest good. And it's 
actually an influence also beyond what we can imagine at this time. But Procyon in this lunar eclipse has a beautiful trine to the, the full moon here. And also on the other side, we have a, a trine to Beta Centauri Hadar at 24 degrees of Scorpio. And again, it is that connection at this lunar eclipse to unconditional love. And so this forms a grand water trine that is uh, in place and highlighted now for this lunar eclipse. In addition um, to this huge emphasis on the late degrees of Pisces, there is also a kite formation to um, Perseus Algol at 26 degrees of Taurus, where Uranus is still conjunct uh, Algol. And of course, that we talked about Pluto's conjunction to Aladfar there. This long-term um, foundational kite is um, highlighted to the max at this lunar eclipse and those late degrees of Pisces again uh, as you can see all of these aspects associated with the with the full moon there there is no question that this is an important message and whatever takes place around this time uh, September 17th to give or take a couple of days on each side is uh, a guidance for the future because this minor grand trine between Uranus, Algol, Neptune, Sheet, and Pluto, Alifar is one that is there for a long time. So it's a foundational piece of guidance that comes through at this lunar eclipse. So there's one more thing I want to highlight as part of this energetic theme, and that's Jupiter's position here. And Jupiter is at 20 degrees of Gemini, conjunct Orion and the fixed star Bellatrix. Bellatrix is at 20 degrees of Gemini, so it's pretty exact. And Bellatrix is associated with energy around being uh, decisive, having accomplished a lot, and being strategic about things. So Jupiter is clearly here to expand our awareness around the Orion uh, galactic heritage and soul memories associated with that. And as Jupiter making his way into the later degrees of Gemini here, Orion is covering about uh, 16 to 29 degrees of Gemini. So if you have uh, late degrees of Gemini, likely you have also uh, soul memories or incarnations even as a soul in the Orion constellation. And this is going to be um, revealed or going deeper with those types of soul memories during this lunar eclipse, but also throughout this year and into next year, because next year around mid-May timeframe, Jupiter will be at 25 degrees of Gemini uh, and the Orion ring nebula. Uh, so this is a process, obviously, uh, but it might be a highlight, a peak at this lunar eclipse that uh, kicks in a process for you around transmuting soul memories from the Orion constellation. So why is this awareness important? This uh, is awareness that we are meant as humanity to unearth uh, during a long-term process, not only because of Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto's positions here long-term help us to release soul-level restrictions and limitations, but this lunar eclipse is a, a very much a highlight on our own awareness and where we are in the process of transmuting such energy. Ultimately, it's meant to be released and transmuted, and it's at the collective level. The collective is moving towards uh, a lighter, more uh, aligned, flowing, light energy. The trines that we are presented with here, the Canis Minor Procyon trine to the lunar eclipse, but also the Beta Centauri Hadar uh, trine there, both of those energies are uh, associated with evolution, unconditional love, and utilizing uh, technology and, and evolution for the good. This is also meant to be part of the flow. 
So it may feel that it's an inner turmoil in that sense, wanting to go in one direction, but being uh, so aware of what holds us back, those squares versus the trines at this lunar eclipse, that it may be difficult to navigate for uh, many of us. But, but this is held in place by this kite, the Algol Aladfar sheet combination here that is facilitated by Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. This is uh, energy and combination that is associated with where we're going. So here we have the Orion Nebula on the sky map, and I've highlighted the nebula there along with a image uh, of the nebula and isn't it beautiful tune into that image to connect with some soul memories that you perhaps have as part of your soul's journey the orion nebula is associated with uh, energy around discernment having trust and applying strength in times of adversity this is a uh, signature energy of what is associated sometimes with human galactic heritage. The Orion constellation has played a major role in our soul's evolution. And the highlight of this uh, pinnacle, if you will, uh, by Orion uh, human heritage type of energy is clearly uh, highlighted here at this lunar eclipse as a learning experience, something that we can learn uh, about ourselves that we may not have connected with until now. Some souls may experience having Orion uh, heritage that is associated with repressed energy. And now this lunar eclipse is really as a function to help clear the deck for the future. And now Pluto's influence here is also to really go back to that shadow work or whatever we call it, but where we can um, see ourselves in a, in a clearer light and our uh, habits and uh, patterns and values that may not serve us as well and understand where they come from. And sometimes the heritage of that, there's the source of that repression or limitation may not be from this life. So between now and November 19th, when Pluto goes into Aquarius again, it is an opportune time to set an intention for how we can understand ourselves better, and especially the hidden parts, the shadow parts, the things that we have suppressed, um, that we are now um, willing to take a look at and understand more about, and how we got to where we are today. Whatever takes place now and in the years to come is to help us get closer into contact with wholeness, with the infinite universal energy that is uh, part of evolution, part of existence. And here at this time, at this lunar eclipse, there's a, an element of required surrender, required in the sense that it will happen no matter what, if we resist it or if we go with the flow. This is a gateway that we need all of us have to pass uh, through. And there's an element very individual for each one of us, what we need to leave behind. It may be a perspective. It may be um, a long-lived pattern that we inherited from our ancestors that is now due to be let go of so that we can walk it freer. But it can also be that we need to switch jobs. We may need to move towns. There is both the physical expression of this release and change that we now know deep down that we're due for, but also it is subtle. It's within ourselves. And sometimes that is to approach something from a different perspective. This lunar eclipse is clearly a um, forceful one in the sense that there is forces 
uh, around us and in the universe on a planetary level in the uni at the universal level that is in at play and highly uh, pointed out so poignantly at 29 degrees of Pisces uh, where Neptune is sitting conjunct Pegasus constellation and the fixed star sheet that stands for ultimate freedom, the infinity of uh, this universal force uh, and the signature of what that means. And on top of that, Pluto's ingress back into Capricorn for a couple of months here is giving us sometimes those not so subtle cues the it's uh, evidence in the physical world capricorn is is the structure that we um keep ourselves with and relate to this is a reminder that whatever we have been leaning on in terms of our structure may need to be revised and whatever that means, whether it's uh, something that you've kept in your house for a long time and now it's time to drive it to the dump, <laughs> or if it's a uh, long-term uh, job that you are just no longer see yourself in uh, and it's time to let it go and make a decision, those types of physical um, representations of what Pluto and Capricorn now is here to remind us of for the last time uh, until Pluto then moves into Aquarius indefinitely. This is uh, a peak of uh, activity uh, and we cannot miss it. We have to um, bring it up to the surface and now is the time. All right, so let's take a look at the second theme, honest, progress on karmic lessons. So here we have the second theme that I called honest progress on karmic lessons. And here we have a continued focus on Pisces by Saturn there at 15 degrees of Pisces, conjunct Eridanus Archenar at 15 degrees of Pisces, opposite Mercury at 14 degrees of Virgo, conjunct Orcus, the dwarf planet in the Kuiper belt at 16 degrees of Virgo. Here we have Saturn continued um, uh, monitoring, if you will, if we are progressing in our spiritual journey as planned. And Mercury now in opposition and with Orcus there, it is a checkpoint. Saturn's conjunction to Eridanus Archenar there is a significant one with regards to our spiritual expansion. The conjunction between the fixed star Archenar and Saturn is helping us to get into the uh, spiritual awakening process. This is a long-term conjunction, uh, and it's there for a reason. Now, a week ago, probably around se uh, September 8th, the sun was in opposition to uh, Saturn, and now it's Mercury's time to be here, conjunct Orcus as well. So now, whatever uh, was highlighted for you, perhaps a week, week and a half ago, is now you're ready to talk about it. There is something here that is coming up that you can also learn about yourself because Mercury is encouraging us to learn about uh, why we got here and how we got here. And that conjunction to Orcus, the dwarf planet Orcus is bringing the awareness of our karmic process, our karmic consciousness into focus. So the awareness around our soul contract, our karmic load, is often coming with a request or invitation for expansion. And at this lunar eclipse, it may not be uh, something we choose. We just, we just naturally expand uh, as a result of that insight. Here we have also two squares supporting Mercury here and Saturn in this endeavor. And that is a square between Mercury and Orion Regal at 17 degrees of Gemini and also to the Great Attractor at 14 degrees of Sagittarius. Orion Regal is associated with energy around learning, teaching, more so teaching, but also the learning and awareness of the riches that we have within. Now, Orion Regal is one of the benevolent fixed stars uh, that is helping us to expand. And this 
uh, square to Mercury at this time is putting words to it. It may become a learning that you now, okay, now I understand so that I can actually share it with somebody else. Orion Regal is here to support us grow, support us expand. And this uh, Grand Cross to the great, uh, involving also the great attractor is uh, helping us to integrate this insight about ourselves at this time. Perhaps there is a new perspective that we have come to by unearthing and, and looking honestly on some of the values or behaviors or patterns that we have seen for so long being applied. And perhaps they are not serving us the way we wish they would. So I want to draw your attention as part of this theme also to Mars there. Mars at seven degrees of Cancer conjunct Canis Major, Sirius B. And if we go back all the way to April and the solar eclipse we had it, there, Mars was in the position where Saturn is now, around 13, 14 degrees of Pisces. So Mars have been traveling now through Pisces, Aries, Taurus and Gemini, and now uh, into early degrees of Cancer. So there is a um, journey there that Mars has been going through, and it's a journey of action. And the highlight here at this lunar eclipse is to draw our attention to Mars uh, in conjunction to Sirius B there. I'm going to talk about that in, in the next theme, theme number three coming up. So the question becomes, what have you learned since April and what have you honestly taken action on during this period of time? And if there's something that you are aware of that you really should be doing something about, now is the time to do that. Something that has come up since April this year that has been nudging you about, okay, this is something I really need to take a closer look at. This is uh, the time to do that because Mars conjunct Sirius B that we're going to talk about next is also a directional one for the future. So I want to talk a little bit more about the influence from Orcus and the significance of Orcus being in Virgo here, opposite Pisces, with a huge focus on Pisces at this lunar eclipse. There is a balancing force that Mercury and Orcus are providing in the sign of Virgo. This axis of Pisces and Virgo are going to be even more highlighted as we go. Orcus is helping us to unearth awareness about our karmic load, our karmic consciousness that we not only personally are working with, but also as a collective. Orcus is here to help us ultimately transmute dark to light. Orcus conjunct Mercury here is helping us to learn about how our actions are having consequences and what the consequences are to our well-being at this time. Virgo is the sign of well-being and healing. So Orcus has a strategic placement here opposite Saturn at this time to help us unearth this awareness so that we can move our shadow into more light. Orcus is helping us to have a new perspective on how to, to deal with our shadow and not seeing uh, our shadow as something threatening or something that's wrong with us, but rather bring our shadow to awareness and integrate it as part of our whole being instead of putting it over there and not looking at it. When we learn how to work with our shadow, we no longer need to repress it. So the question becomes, what have you become aware of that may be associated with a repressed shadow that you now uh, am getting willing to bring up to the surface and look at it honestly to with love and compassion so that you can now uh, take a different action or maybe tweak something as part of your way of going about things to ease it up for you, to make it easier on yourself and to so that it can support you in a different way. 
So at this lunar eclipse, Saturn conjunct Eridanus Archenar opposite Mercury conjunct Orcus is an honest look at our progress and how our shadow is holding us back. We are uh, asked by Orion Rigel to look into where we can see an opening to value ourselves more, integrate it through the square of the uh, greater integrated through uh, the support from the great attractor and this energy is here for us at this time to take a look at by mid-july next year 2025 mars is going to be in this position uh, that mercury is in now saturn will have moved on and actually will be stationing retrograde at, at the same time mars is reaching this 14 degree of virgo point so between now and july next year it's an opportune time to take action unearthing that shadow that we now uh, are due to release uh, as part of humanity's evolution. Uh, as I said, again, it will happen no matter what. Either we go with it in the flow or resisting it. And often the things that we resist are part of our shadow that can be seen and approached in a different way with a, a different perspective. So here we have the third theme that I called aligned action for the future. And this is really a directional formation in this chart associated with the lunar eclipse. And it's associated with Mars again, now conjunct Canis Major Sirius B, squaring the nodal axis here, north node at six degrees of Aries conjunct Alpha Reticulum, opposite the south node, of course, at six degrees of Libra conjunct the supergalactic center. But also we have Black Moon Lilith there at eight degrees of Libra at this time. Mars's conjunction to Sirius B is a powerful one because Mars wants us to take action. Sirius B is associated with energy around being collaborative, but also supportive, innovative. The North Node conjunct Alpha Reticulum is still bringing in energy from the future to show us the new direction where we are going. Alpha Reticulum is that futuristic uh, energy that is paving the way for our next moves, so to say. Uh, as opposed to the south node uh, conjunct Lilith there, Black Moon Lilith, which is speaking to our karmic load, our um, desire to become more aware, but also not limit ourselves to what has been taking place in the past and make assumptions from there. The supergalactic center conjunct the south node is asking us to connect with ancient wisdom, talents and gifts that we came here with. And Black Moon Lilith is asking us to not be restrictive in terms of what this may be. Uh, this conjunction between the supergalactic center, south node and Black Moon Lilith here at this lunar eclipse is a powerful one that also can bring in that um tug of war between I know this by heart, but am I allowed to? Is this really socially acceptable? So this is an important directional guidance here uh, related to the nodal axis. But the fact that Mars is in square with the nodal axis here, conjunct Sirius B, uh, brings in a collaborative, supportive, uh, more lighthearted energy and is uh, encouraging us to take aligned action. Whatever feels right, uh, move in that direction as opposed to our shadow holding us back. We also have Mars in opposition to Cirrus, and Cirrus is conjunct Quawar, the dwarf planet, also from the Kuiper Belt at seven degrees of Capricorn there. This forms a grand cross, a powerful grand cross with directional power. Cirrus is that uh, energy of self-nurturing. In Capricorn, it could be 
how to establish a, a spiritual uh, routine on a daily basis that actually serves you, that nurtures your connection to yourself, your higher self. Quawar is a, a beautiful, uh, high vibrating energy that has to do with utilizing music, dance, uh, body movement to get into that connection with our higher self. So this is uh, aligned with this lunar eclipse because there is a way forward. It, it, there is a way through uh, our shadow, through uh, applying a higher energy, a higher vibration to the experiences that are coming to light now. We have a call for balancing our energies through Venus there, conjunct uh, actress, opposite Chiron in Aries. And this is the supportive energy in place now at this lunar eclipse to help us move smoother through that transmutation of our shadow into potential. Here we have uh, Quawar, that is a Kuiper Belt dwarf planet discovered in 2004. And I also pulled in an image of Cirrus there, uh, who is the harvest, the um, ultimate self-nurturing of our uh, spirit. Now, Quawar is a spirit consciousness that is growing. It's a higher octave of Jupiter. So where was Jupiter? Well, it was in Gemini, right? Highlighting and unearthing the Orion soul memories. So Quawar has an important um, role here in bringing in that higher vibrating energy. And in combination here, in conjunction with Ceres opposite Mars, this is guidance to what take action on, uh, aligned action and noticing what the direction forward we are offered. The North Node conjunct Alpha Reticulum is ultimately a sense of that there is hope for the future and moving in that direction. This Grand Cross is encouraging us to see new possibilities where we haven't seen them before. At this lunar eclipse, how heavy it can be or how forceful it can be, there is always new possibilities. And Quawar here conjunct Ceres opposite Mars and uh, squaring here the nodal axis is a powerful guidance around establishing a new patterns, new routines that serves us better and connected with our higher self, our spiritual self. Quawar is also bringing in that song and dance within to let us follow that and allowing spirit to work through us in flow rather than down the resistance path. So this is a very high vibrating uh, direction and influence on this lunar eclipse at this time. So Seer is conjunct Qualwar here opposite Mars and squaring the nodal axis is a beautiful invitation to put something in place that is going to serve you much better in the future. And if you notice, Quawar and Cirrus are in Capricorn, where Pluto is again. <laughs> so whatever you put in place, whatever you take action on for yourself uh, to serve yourself, to support yourself better is likely going to have permanent results, permanent uh, outcomes. So there we go. This full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces is a forceful one. There is an element of natural force in this lunar eclipse that uh, is not individual. It's a collective. Uh, we just have to either decide how we're going to flow with it or if we're going to resist it. And it comes with unearthing and becoming aware of at a deeper level of soul memories, perhaps from the Orion constellation and incarnations as a soul there, but also in our awareness of the process on how we honestly look at the lessons that we're here to learn and 
uh, choosing a forward direction in an aligned way, applying a higher level of energy, perhaps through sing and song and dance, <laughs> who knows, but it's clearly uh, a directional element of this lunar eclipse that shows us the way on, uh, on how we can support ourselves in a lighter way. So I have a couple of questions. Should you want to integrate this lunar eclipse energy some more? The first question is, what have you become aware of since April that may be of a pattern or a value or a perspective that is not serving you any longer? Part of how we determine what is the shadow is that if we feel resistance around something, that is likely associated with something we are repressing and we don't want to look at it or we feel that it's um, holding us back. So uh, this may take a little contemplation, but the point here at this lunar eclipse is to take action. Uh, allow that action to actually unfold. And sometimes it is enough just to become curious uh, because we may go through our life day to day and not really thinking about what holds us back. But uh, at this lunar eclipse, there is an invitation for us all to be more curious about what is this shadow within ourselves that is holding us back and what can we learn from it? The second question is, how can you apply strength in adversity? And as we go through the rest of the year here and into next year and beyond, we will be experiencing more and more adversity, more and more uh, polarity, if you will. And it may be uh, something that it can be sometimes hard to um, relate to and handle and that is a question to ask ourselves now. How will I stand in my power, in my own strength at the time when I face adversity or uh, getting exposed to adversity? And this may not always be from the external world. It can also be how can I uh, find a quiet place within myself and expand that? The third question is, how can I follow my inner song? And this, you might wonder, like, what is my song? <laughs> but the song within yourself is that uh, what you get excited about, what you get up in the morning for, what is that? And it's due to be expanded within yourself next, because this is a directional uh, guidance from Sirius and Quawar here to really nurture that song within yourself. And sometimes it helps just to put on a great song <laughs> and dance to it, right? But this is really a um, invitation to tap into that high vibrating part of yourself more regularly. And stay tuned for the 2025 Galactic Astrology Multidimensional Energy Forecast. It's likely going to be offered sometime in October, but I will give you a heads up and stay tuned. Are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my Galactic Alignments Reference Guide. There's a link in the description box below. Thank you so much for listening to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Arika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. Thank you so much for being here. I love doing these videos for you, and I can't wait to come back with the solar eclipse one. Thank you again for all the beautiful comments you're leaving me on YouTube. I so appreciate them. I read them all, and I am so happy that uh, this uh, little time together is one that is so appreciated. I love it. <laughs> Bye.